The World Health Organization estimates that one in four people will be affected by a mental illness at some point in their lives. Unfortunately, in most parts of the world, mental health is not regarded with the same type of importance as physical health. As well, the stigma around mental illness often makes people unable to get the support that they might need. Though a very complex issue, we want to share with you five simple ways in which we can all reduce mental illness stigma. Educate yourself. Learn as much as you can about mental health and check your preconceived notions. Myth one, mental illnesses aren't real illnesses. Mental illnesses are not just the regular ups and downs of life, they are actual illnesses with effective treatments. Myth two, people with mental illnesses are dangerous. Researchers agree that mental illness is not a predictor of violence. However, excluding people from communities is often linked with violence and people with mental health issues are usually excluded. As well, people with mental illnesses are more likely to be victims of violence as opposed to being violent themselves. Myth three, people with mental illnesses are weak. Taking care of yourself and having the ability to ask for help when you're in need is a sign of strength, not weakness. Words matter. Yo, that party last night was crazy. That presentation was nuts. I know we all often say these terms, but mental health experts agree that slang terms such as mental or crazy or retarded are all damaging. As an office, we've even tried to challenge the way that we speak and make sure that we're not saying crazy all the time. And it actually forces you to figure out what you're actually trying to say and use different adjectives and more describing words and you end up just sounding a lot smarter. The party that you said was crazy was probably just actually a lot of fun and there were many stories that you should be sharing with the people. Here's another speech tune-up. Don't define a person by their mental illness. Instead of saying he's bipolar, you say he has a bipolar disorder. It seems like there's no difference, but first person language is respectful and an illness does not define someone may seem tricky, but don't be afraid to talk about mental illness. Stand up to stigma. Media does play an important role in shaping our opinions, and unfortunately, people with mental illnesses are often subject to a lot of negative stereotypes within the media. In Germany, BASTA, a mental illness alliance, uses email to alert people about stigmatizing advertisements. 80% of the discriminating cases that BASTA took action on were stopped and the companies made public apologies. Challenging these opinions work, and it doesn't just always have to be about standing up to large companies. Even in your group of friends, if they say something that you disagree with, standing up there is a good start. You don't have to fix someone. If someone that you love or care about is suffering from a mental illness, it makes sense that you would want to care for them and help them and try and figure it out. It then becomes tempting to want to solve their problem. However, telling someone what they should do trivializes the complexity of their illness and can sometimes make them feel shameful for being unable to self-help. The best thing you can do to support a friend with mental illness is just listen, empathize, and be there for them in whatever capacity they may ask. Share your experiences. Many people are eager to tell their friends about how many reps they did at the gym or their new meal plan, but what about therapy? Going to therapy should hold no more stigma than going to a workout class. I personally have been going to therapy for the last year, once a week, and I can say that I have never been happier. I've learned so much about myself and I understand and encourage it to everyone around me that I know personally and to anyone watching this. Similar to working out our bodies, therapy is a way of strengthening your mind. Research shows therapeutic effects on the brain when we verbalize our feelings. The more people start talking about going to therapy, the more likely others are going to consider it. Also, if you feel comfortable, you should share your stories about your own mental health because self-advocacy is extremely important. Those are five ways that we can all work together and challenge ourselves to reduce the stigma around mental illness. And share this video to anyone and everyone who you think might benefit from watching it. Follow us on Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter, and we'll see you next week for more videos like this. Thank you, bye.